is going on everybody today we're here at monroe we are checking out sandy monroe's rivian r1t so huge shout out and thank you to them if you're not subscribed go check out monroe on youtube there'll be a link below make sure you subscribe to them so today we're going to go through we're going to check out the rivian this is my first time ever seeing one and first impressions are it looks insanely nice and it's actually a, a little bit smaller than i would have thought i just came from tesla's cyber rodeo where i got to see the cyber truck up close and the cyber truck was massive but the cyber truck also doesn't really exist <laughs> this vehicle is here today and you can actually buy one although your weight might take a little bit of time but let's go through and check out this vehicle outside and inside we're going to drive it get my impressions and uh, see what we think so i will probably make some tesla comparisons although there's not much to compare this is a truck teslas are electric this is electric but this is a pickup and this is the best electric pickup you can buy there is the hummer ev you can pick up as well but really rare extremely expensive and less efficient than a lot of gas cars actually so this truck actually has some efficiency and some utility so let's go through and we can see the door handles are out here because the car's unlocked so we can grab the door handle open it close it it is not soft close uh, so you will have to close that door when the car is locked or you're driving of course those will go in and be flush with the vehicle increasing aerodynamic efficiency so going around the front of the rivian we do have a frunk here which is awesome because usually pickup trucks there is a button here somewhere uh, usually pickup trucks do not have any trunk kind of storage and now we have basically a trunk right in the front of the car where you could store things that otherwise might not be secure people can't see in here uh, when the car is locked it'll be safe so you can see lots of space here let me go grab my bag and throw it in so i have just like a mail bag here i mean tons of space it fits fine looks like golf clubs would fit in here i don't play golf but i know a lot of people care about that uh, so the other thing you can do with this frunk is the floor does come up there's a little latch right here this folds back and then you have magnets here boom so you have even more storage looks like this is our rivian charging equipment in there maybe we'll check that out uh, but the front is massive really nice awesome for road trips you have two lights to keep everything bright nothing up top i will say if you compare this to ford's f-150 lightning uh, i actually like the f-150 a lot better because all of this on the f-150 lightning comes up and it's a lot easier to access and i think their front is way bigger than this as well but still a good size you have windshield washer fluid over here now also this is a power frunk you can close it manually with your hand wow this is a little high up and it's just so big <laughs> i'm used to the tiny little thing on uh, my model y um, so you can do this by hand or you can find this button again and you can click it and it will power close which is awesome tesla what's going on we really want that on our teslas i don't know what they're waiting for if you look around the vehicle you'll see cameras all over the place you have a camera here a camera here and this helps with driver assist i think more features are coming but we will try that out today wow this kind of looks like a Tesla. <laughs> so funny. All right, unfortunately, I lost a little audio here, so I have to do some voiceover for a small part of the video. But checking out the gear tunnel, it's pretty cool. You have this space uh, behind the bed, like kind of in between the bed and the truck where you can put some things. And you can actually plug into a 12 volt that's in there. And I was saying, I think I could fit in there, but uh, I'm good. I didn't want to. But it's pretty interesting because I had some trouble with this. It's just a little toggle on the screen. You press the button. And the first time it gave me an error and nothing happened. And then after that, there's the 12 volt plug right there. After that, uh, it kind of popped open a little bit, but I could not get it open. So it took me a couple tries, but I don't know, maybe I was doing something wrong. Uh, so they did, they did pop open and you can store a bunch of stuff back here. There are um switches in case somebody gets trapped in there you can press a button and get out now when i went to stand on this it it holds you and it's advertised to hold you but it just doesn't seem like it should be holding a person on it so it's a little weird to step up onto but it does hold you uh and that's pretty cool all right so now looking into the bed of the truck this is kind of the point this is why the rivian is so cool it's electric there's a lot of electric choices now but not any or not many with a bed like this so it's four and a half feet so not the biggest bed i think it's up to seven feet when the tailgate is down uh, i brought that bag of dirt to kind of demonstrate what it looks like with some stuff in there i mean that's that's 50 uh, quarts I think it was so that's a pretty good size uh, but hopping up there's nowhere to put your foot so you just kind of have to step up there a lot of trucks have like a step in the bumper now uh, but in the back of the truck you get two 120 volt outlet plugs you actually can charge another uh, EV off of those plugs 110 volt as it says right there you actually can charge another EV so if you needed to help out a friend in their EV that was stranded you could charge them for an hour or so give them a couple miles and hopefully they could then drive their car to a better plug moving to the other side you have your air compressor which is just awesome you could inflate your tires or anyone's tires if you needed to at any point i just think that's so great i would always keep it a uh, hose in my bed so i could uh, be using that all the time and then here there's some locking mechanism now this is an accessory that rivian provides it's kind of a rope and when you put that in there when the truck is locked 
it that rope is locked in place. So you could like put it around your bike or something, and then you could keep things locked in the back. If you don't have the tonneau cover or you want to leave the cover up or something, say it's too tall, you could still lock things back there. Looking at the gear racks here, these are optional accessories, and they're very easy to take on and off. You can just flip this switch here, and you can take them off. Of course, you can lock them in place, so nobody can just walk up and take them off. But what's really cool about them is once you take them off, you can move them onto the top of the truck. They're kind of extendable. Uh, you can make them shorter or longer to put them wherever you want. So really versatile there, and you can put those on and off as you please. Now the tonneau cover, this is an optional uh, add-on. It's automatic. You can have it not automatic, or you can get the automatic one. And you can just close up the bed just like that. And again, it's like you have a whole other trunk space area where you can keep things locked up as long as things aren't too tall. But if something's too tall, you could just press the button, open it back up, and put something in there. It's really nice. It works really well. Uh, speed is really good. It's a tiny bit loud. Uh, not that it really matters, but just something I noticed. Putting the tailgate up, it is not powered. You have to do it yourself. Then I was kind of curious if it would squish my hand here. So I waited and bam, it did crush my fingers in there. I kind of couldn't get my hand out, um, but it's very soft on the tonneau cover. So it didn't really hurt. Uh, but just so you know, that will pinch you if you have your fingers in there. So then let's look at the charge port. Pretty important for an EV. It's right here. It actually looks great. You would never really know it was there unless you were looking for it. And then there's these three lines here. If you press on there, it should open up. There you go. And it opens up pretty quickly, actually. That was a really nice speed for that to open up. And then you can see it's just CCS. You can pop this down if you're at a fast charger, uh, but this is what you'd be using at home. You can get up to 11.5 kilowatts at home, something like 16 miles per hour or so. I can put the specs on screen and uh, pretty respectable charging rate, pretty much the same as Tesla, but it takes a little longer to get to a full charge because this battery is so big at 125 kilowatt hours. All right, so speaking of charging the Rivian in the map, you can click here to see the different chargers. And there's a little key here for what the different colors mean. You have up to 25 kilowatts, which is very slow. You basically would wanna be there for hours or even be spending the night there. Up to 100, which is decently fast, but still you're gonna be spending uh, an hour or so there. And then over 100 kilowatts, which, you know, if you're talking 150, that's that's really good. Uh, up to 200 would be awesome as well. The map's kind of strange in that they come and go as you zoom in and out. So sometimes it looks like you lost some, but I think it prioritizes the faster chargers. But as you zoom out, you can see there are chargers along the way, but there's one here. And does that mean there's one always or there's one available right now and the others are being used you can't click on these to get any more information now if you do calculate a route it will tell you the different chargers to go to uh, but if you click here it's going to say 14 minutes of charging that's not bad we do another one this one has an hour and 14 minutes of charging that's a little long but not totally unreasonable hour 15 yeah so quite a bit longer than what you'd experience with a tesla um, but doable in a day all right, so sitting inside, let's check out the UI and see how we can kind of interact with this vehicle. Now, it's my first time in here, so I may miss some things, uh, but we can see how intuitive it is to somebody new to the Rivian interface. Now, first thoughts right away looking at this, it does remind me a lot of Tesla. I mean, what are you going to do with a big touchscreen? It's going to be pretty similar. Uh, I actually kind of like the aspect ratio. It's a little short and wide, although uh, no, this is easy to reach too. Again, I'm not all that tall, but I can easily reach any part of this screen. And my seat's actually too far back. I would actually move this forward a bit. Wow, that's fast. <laughs> a lot faster than in the Model X. That's funny. Um, so going through here, you can have your seats heated. And I think they're only heated. I do not believe they're cooled. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And you have, of course, defrost here getting rid of everything on the windshield. So those are right there. A lot of people were mad at Tesla for taking those away in version 11. So smart of Rivian to put them right here. Really easy to access your climate up and down. And this is different for the passenger as well. So you can change that uh, as you like. All right, so going to music over here and scrolling on here is very fast and very smooth. So that's really nice. No lagging at all. Um, so that's great to see because that's always a worry when you go to other manufacturers. But this vehicle is also built from the ground up to be an EV uh, with all of these things in mind. So this looks like uh, different drive settings. So all-purpose, sport, con conserve, probably for better efficiency, off-road and towing. Brake regens on high, of course. That's how you always want to be. The ride is soft. Key must be detected. So uh, since it's come up, let's talk about the keys. So this is one option. You can have this. Of course, you can use an app on your phone, just like Tesla. You also have a key fob. It looks kind of like a carabiner. And funny enough, there's a fourth key. You can have a bracelet. Rivian has a bracelet that you can put on. I guess if you are being really adventurous and you have no pockets or something, you're like streaking and you have to just wear this bracelet that you can still get in the car, you know? So uh, you take this key and it tells you right here to put it in the top. Oh, there we go. So it's right here, which it's set on the screen. Anyway, it detected the key. Now we can mess around with these things here. So if we click ride, we can change from soft to stiff. Soft, of course, we want that. Um, but maybe we'll do stiff for some sportier driving when we go. Now, ride height, 11.5 inches standard, and that felt pretty high to get into the car. Did you agree with that? Yeah, yeah you thought so too. Um, 
Of course, you can go low. Is it safe to lower the ride height? Please confirm there are no obstructions. That's pretty smart to make sure that there's nothing that's going to get bumped. We cannot go to high or highest right now. I'm not sure why. Things will go through these other ones just so you can see. So all purpose. Ah, okay. So it must have been because we were in one of these other settings. So going to high, we're going up to 13.1. Oh yeah. You can see the front lifting. You can feel it lifting. Pretty cool. Uh, we'll keep it on standard. Sport mode, we'll lower the ride height. That's fine. Takes us all the way to low. Wow, you can really feel that. <laughs> that air suspension moving off-road. So these are just different drive modes for the different things you want to do. So here's ways to control the vehicle in other ways. This is where I was having trouble with the gear tunnel. I was pressing these and it wasn't actually opening them. I'm not sure if I was doing something wrong, uh, but it took a few tries, but now we're, we're open. You can open the hood from here. You should be able to open and close it. So let's see. It opens. You can pause it. And now you can close it all from the display here. So that worked really well. You can open the charge port from here adjust wheels and mirrors, basically just control all the aspects of the car. And there's actually a car wash mode, which is so funny because Tesla just recently added that a few months ago. Um, I don't want to turn it on, but it's cool that they have that. This last one's for gear guard. I don't know fully how it works, but it has to do with kind of like a sentry mode type of thing where you can make sure all of your things are safe in the car when you're not near it. And then here's some other things, cameras, let's see. Oh, wow, so we can look all around the vehicle. So these are the cameras that we, um, we're seeing when we were looking around the outside of the vehicle. So there's our forward camera, our reverse camera. It's nice because Tesla doesn't let you look at the forward camera, uh, but looking at the reverse camera, dirty as it should be, and uh, but you can still see him back up there. This may stay static just to kind of help you with parking, but that's a, I mean, that's a really high definition, perfect representation of where we're sitting right now. All right, so we're about to go for a drive. Opening the door here. This is really low and kind of strange. I'm probably just not used to it, but check this out on the camera. Show them this camera here. When you open the door because the camera's attached to the door, you can see the whole world is moving around. I don't know, it just looks silly to me. Uh, so, okay, we're gonna go off for a drive here. Put on the brake, it wants the key card again. It's somewhere around here. Nice, so that works really well, just like uh, Tesla. And I don't know how to do anything in here. <laughs> so here we go, it's on the stock. Reverse is up. Whoa, we're in reverse. I guess that's also the windshield wipers or something. <laughs> All right, are we in reverse? All right, here we go. So driving the Rivian, Rated range at 314 miles, of course, you won't get that on the daily, especially if you're doing Rivian's recommendation of only charging to 70% daily. And if you're towing something, you can expect to get about half that. Um, I don't wanna move too much around in here because it's not my car. That's my car though. And uh, <laughs> over there. Um, and as you're driving, you will probably get less than the rated range. If you're towing, you'll get about half of the rated range. So, wow, the regen is extremely strong in this car. I'm like, <laughs> I'm kind of doing this because I'm not used to how strong it is. So the heated steering wheel is on, which I don't really need, or maybe it's just from the, um, from the heat of the sun. And we're gonna go here. Now I'm, <laughs> wow, that turn signal noise. That is interesting. I wonder if that's customizable. Uh, Okay, so driving the truck, wow, it feels very small for a truck. Now, the front here is massive. Uh, just like a pickup truck, if you've driven one, the hood up here is just huge and it extends out really far. I'm just so used to driving Teslas now where it's a smaller area up there and it slopes down so aggressively, you really don't see anything. And there's just a lot up there. And you know, I think Rivian could get a lot better efficiency if they would have made this more looking like an EV, but I think they really wanted to attract normal truck drivers to uh, go electric and try out an electric truck. That regen is ridiculous. Um, but in my opinion, the truck does look really nice. I don't really care what a truck looks like <laughs> because it's a truck, it's supposed to do stuff. Uh, zero to 60 is I think 3.3 seconds. This is wickedly fast. So we can, whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> Whoops, did I destroy my gimbal there? <laughs> oh my God, do it, do it again. All right, do it one more time. Wow, oh my gosh, that's powerful. Now, here's something really strange about it though. So in a Tesla, when you, again, a lot of Tesla comparisons, when you step on it, you're just, you're gone. The yeah. second your foot hits the floor. In this one, it like doesn't do anything. So I put the pedal to the floor and nothing happens. And then we start accelerating. So I don't know, can you see my foot down there? Cause this is pretty open. See if you can get that. So let me demonstrate that for you. So right now I'm gonna slow down a lot so that we can, I'm just gonna do this for a second, but I'm gonna hit it to the floor. You might wanna hold the camera cause it's gonna move. Like make sure it doesn't move around. And so I'm gonna step on it here. So see how, how long that takes the difference from putting your, now the power is insane. Like that is awesome. It feels, it feels just like Tesla acceleration. It feels very good. So the acceleration is really good, but it's strange how that delay is there. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just something I'm noticing. I actually really like the turn signal noise. It's strange, but I love it. It is really feel, Yeah, I feel like it's probably customizable if it sounds like that, but 
um, it's, it's really nice. All right, so more vehicles made by Rivian here. We just happened to come across this. Aaron pointed it out if you want to show them. We have the Rivian Amazon trucks that are here charging. Um, I don't think we're allowed to charge, but I'm going to pull up and just see if anybody's in here, what's going on. But that is cool. There are three of these. We are in Auburn Hills, Michigan right now. So nobody's in there, but the trucks are charging up. Very cool uh, Rivian-made vehicle right there. So going into reverse, you do not have to have your foot on the brake. You can just put it in reverse when you're stopped. Backup camera is really nice. It's big. Uh, the screen, I'm, I'm used to the Model X screen now being bigger, um, so it's a little smaller, but wow, you have the front uh, camera coming up just to show you. Look at these. That is so cool. All right, so looking at the climate here, if you bring it up, again, very similar to Tesla and something I really prefer. It works really well. I was getting really hot and I'm like, what is going on here? Because this vent was off. If you just click it, it actually turns the vent off, which is nice. And then you can adjust it and kind of point it wherever you like. Same with the side vent here. Um, so the vents are hidden pretty well. They look a little more normal than a Tesla vent that you really can't see at all, but they look fine. Everything looks really good. All right, so we're heading to the highway here and this, <laughs> everything in here is just very reminiscent of Tesla. And we were just talking about, you know, if it works, then you don't really need to reinvent it. Uh, so that's fine. But like the driver display here that shows the little truck um, looks exactly like Tesla and uh, how it shows the other vehicles around. It's very nice and it works very well. But getting used to the yoke on the Model X now, I, I dislike this round wheel. It's comfortable. It obviously works very well, but it does get in my way of, of looking at the, the screen here. So we're going to get on the highway and I really want to try Rivian's driver assist whatever it's called. I'll put it on the screen because I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's get up to speed here. Oh yeah, that falls off big time after about 60. Um, but still, still good acceleration. Um, so we can go into driver assist. So just like the Model 3 and Model Y, you double click down here and there we go. So this is our follow distance, I assume. I don't know how to adjust anything here. So probably up. Oh no, up turns it off. All right. So driving here, Got this all figured out. So to adjust your speed, you use left and right. Um, these are buttons right here. And if you click once, then you get one mile per hour. If you hold it, you go down or up five miles per hour. And uh, that works really well. And then following distance is a scroll wheel up and down. So if I want to have a bigger following distance, I go up on the scroll wheel and that'll give me more room. If I want a smaller following distance, I go down on the scroll wheel and that'll put me there. So that's actually working pretty well. I held that for just a second and got all the way to 85. So I don't want to go that fast. Um, but overall, so far, the driver assist works really well. It's keeping planted in the lane perfectly. Um, I'm noticing the cars up there are disappearing pretty quickly. Like it can't, doesn't seem like it sees that far ahead or at least it doesn't care to. And then same with cars to the side. Like this guy's still not appearing, still not appearing. And there he finally showed up. Whereas on a Tesla, it shows you all around um, and a little farther up, maybe not too much farther up, but uh, yeah, really, uh, so far feels really, really good. Uh, I don't know if this has lane change ability. If I turn the turn signal on, we're just sitting here. I think that's coming later. Rivian has, uh, I think, a LiDAR up front and a bunch of cameras and radars and stuff. So they're going to add more um, over time. But for now, this is what you get. All right, so we have the nav up here working pretty well. We have to click start. And you do get multiple route options, which Tesla does not have. And that is very nice to see because uh, sometimes you just want to go a different way. The car doesn't always know best. It's nice to be able to pick. Uh, but let's talk about comfort and oh no uh, <laughs> let's talk about comfort oh thank you and uh, road noise and everything so comfort is really good the suspension feels great the road noise is also awesome we have very bad roads here and so far it sounds very quiet uh, wind noise I didn't even really notice too much road noise was also very good especially being on you know in a truck on truck tires and all that stuff so uh, all things considered I think it's extremely quiet materials and everything look great you can tell Rivian worked hard on this interior and used really premium materials. Um, everything seems pretty solid in here. Like I know even in my Model X, which is a more expensive vehicle than this, there are parts on the dash where if you push on it, it'll squish a little bit and make a little noise. Uh, not that they make noise while you're driving, but it's just something that I noticed when <laughs> you pay so much for a car, you think it should all be pretty solid, right? Uh, and in here, I feel like everything that I've interacted with so far is extremely solid. Steering wheel feels okay. Uh, I like the Tesla steering wheel a little better. They have the, Tesla doesn't do leather anymore. I don't know if this is leather or not, but whatever it is, it's, I don't know. It doesn't feel great. I, I like whatever Tesla uses better. Um, but interior is very good. Again, using the driver assist, it's kind of like what I'm obsessed with. Uh, so far, it's solid. I mean, I don't have 100 miles on it or anything, but just going up and down the road here, what we've done works really well. And I'm very impressed by the blind spot 
uh, monitoring there. Because in the Tesla, if you put your turn signal on and someone in your blind spot, it turns them red, but that's it. It doesn't even make an audible noise unless you try to turn into them, then it will. Whereas somebody's coming up here, if I put the turn signal, audible noise and red indication right there. So it's really telling me like, yo, somebody is next to you, let's not move over yet. And then, you know, you can do it when it's safe to do so. All right, so overall, I got to take over here, but if you're comparing this to autopilot, you know, for my short journey that I just did, I mean, that was beautiful. It worked perfectly well. The driving dynamics of the car, it feels like a smaller vehicle to drive, which is really nice when you have those, you know, massive vehicles. It's not as fun. Even parking it, when I parked it over there for a minute, was super easy to park. It's just still this hood's kind of throwing me off. I don't know, do you notice that too? Like yeah. the hood is just so massive. <laughs> it looks funny. It reminds me of my father-in-law's pickup truck I've driven like one time and I just like the whole drive <laughs> you have this huge wedge in front of you I don't know it's just distracting to me um, so it's still got that going on for the for truck wise but comfort noise I mean it's definitely like a luxury segment but you also have all the utility of a truck which is just so awesome I really like this vehicle now you can't use the driver assist here uh, you can use traffic work cruise control but you can't use the lane keep um, on the side street so I don't like that but overall my short time with this vehicle, quality is awesome, ride is amazing. I really like everything about it and I would love to own something like this. Uh, I mean, I could honestly see trading my Model Y for something like this. Now, the big thing you have to think about is charging infrastructure. If you do wanna take this on longer road trips, it's just not gonna match up to Tesla, at least not yet. Of course, Rivian is working on it. They are working on their charging network and infrastructure and they're gonna make that better. But that's kind of the biggest negative. If you're gonna stay around home, you're gonna charge at home, do a lot of tasks with the truck in that way, you're gonna have no problem charging at home and doing everything that way. Now, I do wanna do a quick comparison to the Cybertruck. Now, like I said in the beginning, the Cybertruck doesn't exist. You can't actually buy one yet, but seeing it in person, the Cybertruck is massive compared to this thing. I mean, this is like a sedan compared to the Cybertruck. It was just so big. Um, and that's, you know, good and bad, depending on what you want. The Cybertruck, I think, is advertised to come with a six foot bed and, and all these other things. It'll have more towing capacity and all of that, but, um, and, and more range and things. But overall, it's, these are still two completely different vehicles. You could cross shop them. You could maybe be like, oh, I'd like the Cybertruck, but it's too expensive. I'm gonna go with the Rivian depending on, of course, what the Cybertruck price ends up being. Uh, but uh, there's still two totally different vehicles, and I think there's room in, the, in the, the electric vehicle, the electric pickup truck segment for really both of them. Um, so if you have any questions that I didn't address in the video, please leave those in the comments down below. I hope you liked this one. If you did, hit like and get subscribed, and you will see me in the next video.